Today, we're switching things up and taking a dive into the 1980s Twilight Zone. Many fans hold up the survival as a solid follow-up to the classic series. The show featured countless familiar stars in their earlier days, and writing talents such as George R.R. R. Martin, Harlan Ellison, and Rockne S. O'Bannon. Best of all, the horror legend himself Wes Craven was on board. He directed a total of seven segments, and he even showed up in one of them. You little brat, let us out of here. Come on. Much like the classic anthology series, the 1980s revival blended sci-fi, fantasy, horror, and offered up social commentaries reflective of the era. I recently revisited this series and figured it was time to spotlight some of my favorites. Submitted for your approval, here are my top 10 80s Twilight Zone episodes. Let's kickstart this list with one of the more lighthearted episodes in a revival, Dealer's Choice. King High Street. Can you beat it? It's poker night. A bunch of friends get together to play some cards. What could go wrong? Apparently a hell of a lot. Because after a suspicious amount of sixes keep appearing, it becomes clear. One of these players just may be the devil himself. But what's the devil doing here in New Jersey? What are you talking about, Tony? I think he lives here. This is one of the seven episodes directed by Wes Craven, who most of us tend to think of in terms of horror. But this series gave Craven the opportunity to show off some of his other storytelling skills. He also helmed the sci-fi segment Chameleon, the sentimental story Her Pilgrim Soul, and this entry, which is actually light in tone despite the subject matter. Uh, Pete, do you have any water? Yeah, in the kitchen. Keeping the faucet saves on space, you know? <laughs> Shut up! The highlight of Dealer's Choice is the top-notch ensemble cast. First up, we have the most recognizable face here, the legendary Morgan Freeman. The cast is rounded out with Dan Hadaya, M. Emmett Walsh, Garrett Morris, and Barney Martin, who I mainly know as Jerry's dad from Seinfeld. Seeing all these familiar stars together in a Twilight Zone of all places is actually pretty awesome. There's solid chemistry between everyone, and the humorous tone is balanced very well. <laughs> Despite the threat of someone potentially losing their soul. If you ever found yourself just looking up at the clouds and imagining different shapes, you know what, scratch that. If you ever found yourself staring at some hideous wallpaper and swearing something sinister in that flowery abyss was staring right back at you, then the episode Something in the Walls may feel eerily familiar. This segment delves deep into pure psychological horror as Charlotte Perkins Gilman's gothic short story The Yellow Wallpaper is given a fifth dimension spin. This unnerving tale takes place at Crest Ridge Sanitarium. A new staff psychologist, Dr. Craig, as played by Demir Andrei, struggles to help one of the more unusual patients, Shara Miles, as played very well by Deborah Rafin. Get it away from me! Get it away from me! Get it away from me! As the story plays out, we learn that Sharon is obsessed with avoiding patterns at all costs. She only wears solid colors, and she even demands that her room be painted with solid colors. Her fear of patterns is linked to horrifying experiences in which she witnessed nightmarish faces emerging from shapes on her wall. This disturbing mystery kept me hooked until the very end. And for fans of practical effects, such as myself, this is a must watch. Next up on my list is The Storyteller. This is an episode with some intriguing twists and turns, and it keeps you guessing. The Storyteller stars Glennis O'Connor as Dorothy Livingston, a retired teacher who was out and about with her niece one day when she spots someone from her past. Run! That man. Dorothy follows the mystery man, and as the chase ensues, she recounts the identity of the person in a flashback. Many years earlier, she had a student named Micah Frost, who was out of the ordinary. Dorothy was told that Micah required full access to the library at all times. Micah? Young Micah Frost was played by David Faustino, who most may know from the hit TV series Married with Children, where he played Bud Bundy. And just yesterday, he was in diapers. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> As the segment progresses, Dorothy's curiosity leads her to do a bit of snooping. She discovers that Michael lives with an older relative who he reads to every night. But there's much more to it than that. Michael later confesses that the elderly man is actually his great-great-great-grandfather. That's a lot of greats. Apparently, he's been keeping the old man alive by reading to him every night, but never finishing the story until the following night. So this kid truly has mastered the fine art of cliffhangers. This is a tale that's basically a celebration of storytelling itself. I ended up enjoying it a lot more than I expected. 
Faustino gave a strong performance, and I have to credit Glennis O'Connor because she did a great job portraying both a young and older version of the same character. The assassination of JFK had a profound and far-reaching impact on history. And as we all know, conspiracy theories help keep the event in the spotlight for years to come. So it's no surprise that in the world of science fiction, the assassination became a focal point for many alternate history and time travel stories. Naturally, the Twilight Zone put its unique stamp on the event with the episode Profile in Silver. This one starred veteran actor Lane Smith as Dr. Fitzgerald. He's a historian from the year 2172 who traveled back in time and assumed the identity of an instructor at Harvard. Dr. Fitzgerald's mission was to study the error of the Kennedy administration and record the assassination. But the key aspect in his tale is that Dr. Fitzgerald is also a descendant of JFK. When the time comes, Fitzgerald instinctively warns the president to take cover. With that, President Kennedy ducks, the shot misses, and all of history changes. The intrigue of this tale actually comes in the aftermath of the new timeline as we explore the ripple effects and consequences of this altered history. Lane Smith was a strong lead, and Andrew Robinson did really well in the role of JFK. The war was different, impersonal. They weren't shooting at you, really, just the uniform. Maybe whoever shot at you wasn't shooting at you, but the office you represent. You may recall Robinson from Dirty Harry, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and fellow horror fans will recognize him from Child's Play 3 and Hellraiser. Considering how many great time travel episodes exist in the Twilight Zone, it says a lot that this one ranks right up there with the best. Of all the episodes on my list, Shelter Skelter is the one that feels closest in spirit to the classic series. This one reminds me a little of the episode The Shelter. Now to be clear, Shelter Skelter is very much its own unique story. However, both episodes explore how an impending threat can cast a shadow over the lives of everyday citizens. Keep in mind, this Twilight Zone revival emerged during the tail end of the Cold War, so lingering tensions and anxieties were still common in pop culture. Shelter Skelter stars Joe Mantegna as Harry Dobbs. Mantegna is best known for his role as Joey Zaza in The Godfather 3. You will not give, I'll take! And he's also the voice of Fat Tony in The Simpsons. Get your hand off my car. No. <laughs> You're still too high, relax! Harry is a hardcore survivalist who has built a top-secret fallout shelter in his basement for himself and his family. He's completely obsessed with preparing and training for potential nuclear fallout. Joan Allen plays his long-suffering wife, and it's obvious that day-to-day -day life is not easy in this house. Harry's preoccupation with Doomsday and the strain it causes his family is at the heart of this story. Well, I guess it's just like you predicted, Harry. The whole world's going straight down the old toilet. Harry's closest friend, Nick, is portrayed by John Grease, who I've mentioned before here on the channel in relation to his work on Fright Night 2. Shelter Skelter is a tense segment. It taps into themes of paranoia, isolationism, and it's a story that goes to some very dark places. I almost long for it. What? The bomb. The Mind of Simon Foster is an episode I think Black Mirror fans will appreciate. The tech-based sci-fi tale star Bruce Whites as the titular character. Simon is a down-and-out guy desperate for work. He ends up selling his valuables at a local pawn shop just to survive. But things take an interesting turn when Simon's pawnbroker lets him in on a much easier, though far more illegal way, to make some quick cash. You're familiar I trust with memory dipping. In this world, there's an entire black market for people's memories. All Simon has to do is allow this strange new technology to do some memory dipping. We go in electronically and slice away memories. But the deal is, once Simon sells his memories, they're gone. The glue that holds us all together is the top-notch performances. Bruce Whites is very relatable as an everyday guy who just needs a break. But from the onset, it does seem like he's making a deal with the devil. For those who buy, the risk is quite worthwhile. As for those who sell, the rewards are quite... Reasonable. The pawnbroker is played extremely well by Giza Kovacs, who's best known for his appearances in David Cronenberg's films Dead Zone and Scanners. 
As this unique tale plays out, you can't help but wonder how many memories from his life is Simon willing to give up so he can get back on his feet. Up next, we have a grisly tale called Nightcrawlers. This is a well-known fan favorite. It was directed by William Friedkin of Exorcist fame, and it was based on a short story by Robert R. McCammon. The tale takes place in a small roadside Utah diner on a stormy night. The ominous mood is established up front as we learn about a recent massacre at a nearby motel. And to make matters worse, apparently the culprit is still on the run. Heading this way? I don't know. Which way would you go? Nightcrawlers features a solid ensemble cast, but the focus here is Scott Paulin as Price, a Vietnam vet who eventually finds his way to the diner. Price is deeply haunted by his horrific wartime experiences, and it would seem he also has some strange mental abilities. Cold beer tastes great right now. Oh, well, I just will. Beer just make me sleepy anyway. James Whitmore Jr., the son of James Whitmore, who you recall starred in the classic episode On Thursday We Leave for Home, stars as Trooper Wells. I don't want to talk about the war. Why not? Dennis, why don't you just leave him alone? This guy reminded me somewhat of Sheriff Teasel from First Blood. He encounters this vet, who is obviously in a horrible place, but he keeps pressing him. I understand y'all had a hard time over there. It doesn't give you any call to show disrespect for the law. As Price begins to unravel, we learn that the war is still a terrifying reality for him. And with that, the situation descends into nightmare territory. Now, I noted earlier the Cold War era was reflected in this series, but the war in Vietnam, which was also a sensitive topic during this period, was covered as well. But Nightcrawlers was easily the most memorable and shocking exploration of post-war trauma. The next episode on my list is A Little Peace and Quiet, and this is yet another segment directed by Wes Craven. A Little Peace and Quiet is about a housewife named Penny, as played by Melinda Dillon. And up front, it's Crystal Clay. She's having an insanely rough time dealing with the demands of a very loud family. Jesus Christ. You may recall Melinda Dillon for her role in Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Harry and the Hendersons, but she's probably best known as Mrs. Parker in the holiday classic A Christmas Story. One day Penny finds a mysterious gold pendant in the shape of a sundial. Now this item becomes very handy because it gives her a special ability. By simply saying shut up, she can freeze the entire world around her. And when she's ready to dive back into the chaos, all she has to do is give the go-ahead, and the world continues. Start talking? As the episode plays out, Penny takes advantage of this godlike power, freezing time whenever she wants to do whatever she wants. Now, on the surface, it may seem like our lead is basically set for life. But this is the fifth dimension, and you can bet there's a twist. And let's just say the direction this story goes is the reason this episode left an impression. Although this series originally aired when I was very young, this story about someone who can freeze time always stuck with me. The concept was featured in the original Twilight Zone episode, a kind of a stopwatch. But here, the idea was explored in a very different way. Some guys get all the luck. Some guys have all the pain. Some guys, some guys, like me. Number two on my list is a dark episode called Kentucky Rye. This tale is about a salesman named Bob Spindler, as played by Jeffrey DeMunn. Early on, Bob makes a huge sale. I did it! I rolled the big one! Naturally, he wants to celebrate. The problem is, Bob is a raging alcoholic. So his idea of partying is getting smashed, pissing off everyone around him, and then driving home drunk. Of course, while cruising down the wrong side of the road, Bob has an accident. The lead here, Jeffrey DeMunn, gives a strong portrayal of a guy who's dangerously out of control. You'll likely recognize him from his role as Dale in The Walking Dead, but he also appeared in three of Frank Darabont's pivotal films, The Shawshank Redemption, The Green Mile, and The Mist. 
After his crash, Bob finds himself in a mysterious bar called the Kentucky Rye. And from here on out, things get very strange. Now on the surface, everyone inside seems to be having a great time. But all is not what it seems. Kentucky Rye is an episode that shows up on a lot of fan favorite lists, and I'm happy to add it to mine as well. This is a grim cautionary tale that's well worth a watch. This one's on me! And now we come to number one on my list of favorite 80s Twilight Zone episodes, To See the Invisible Man. Mitchell Chaplin. Answer him. Yes. This segment is based on a short story written by Robert Silverberg, which was originally published in the debut issue of Worlds of Tomorrow magazine. This adaptation touched on many familiar elements we've seen in the fifth dimension, but it also brings something fresh to the table. Once again, we're in an eerie dystopian world. Cotter Smith plays Mitchell Chaplin, a shady guy convicted of the crime of being cold. Mitchell is sentenced to one year of invisibility which in this society means he's marked by an implant on his forehead which warns others not to interact with him or even acknowledge his existence. Obviously this feels like a rather cruel and unusual punishment, but upfront Ali doesn't see it that way at all. This is nothing to me. Nothing to me. To see the Invisible Man touches on themes of government overreach, isolation, and morality. Mitchell is a very flawed character, and throughout this story, his issues are on full display. I said I'll have the roast. Can I help you, ma'am? Yes, I think I'll try this too, please. Uh, of course. I'll just uh, serve myself, okay? The dystopian world is fleshed out surprisingly well here. The segment covers a lot of ground and details how this punishment is enforced via creepy floating security drones, which seemingly monitor all of society. Yep, you can bet Big Brother is watching. This compelling story definitely lends itself to discussion, and it also begs the question, if you were in this insane scenario, how long would it take before you crack under the pressure of being shunned by all of society? So, there you have it, my top 10 1980s Twilight Zone episodes. Now, part of the fun of making lists like these is that we all have our own favorites, so feel free to comment below and let me know what are some of your favorites from the series. Also, if you love the original show, check out my Twilight Zone Review Marathon, which covers the classic episodes. We're talking breakdowns, commentaries, and trivia. I'm still working my way through all 156 episodes of the original show and having a blast while doing it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit that sub button, and go ahead and hit the notification bell too. This way you'll know next time we travel through the fifth dimension. For now, be well. Stay safe and take care. Later. Some guys get all the luck. Some guys have all the pain. Some guys get all the breaks. Some guys turn, 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 turn.